It is the most powerful technology that the world has seen, I believe, since the invention of agriculture. Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Bitcoin is, is better than currency. As with most major technology shifts, let's think about what young people are doing. 32% of young people say they prefer Bitcoin to stocks. 42% of millennial males say they plan to purchase Bitcoin in the next five years. We're barely in the first inning right now. What up, Jeff here with all my crypto renegades. And in this video, we're gonna be doing a follow-up to my first price prediction video for Bitcoin. And I'm still gonna stick by my original $60,000 uh, Bitcoin in the near future prediction. My price prediction was a little bit off in the timing. Uh, but if you look at it, my video was at $50,000, we're at forty nine. dollars So it isn't like we had a big crash. We did go down to, and I did say that we could go down to about $42,000. We went down almost to $42,000. $43,000 right there. And just like Carl from the moon, exactly. But... It wasn't exactly, it was like a thousand away, but I just had to get that in there. And so check this out. On the month, um, a lot of people are talking about this head and shoulders pattern right here that we have. And to me, it looks like we're going to break out to the upside. Uh, a lot of the times this is a bearish signal, but I believe since we're in a bullish, you know, uh, trend right now, the, you know, 52,000. And I think what happened is it closed below and that's why we didn't, you know, rock it up. And plus, it only, you know, things only work like seven out of ten times. So it's just like predicting the weather. You know, you can read it, but sometimes the weather changes. And there's nothing you can do about it. You just follow the trend, you know, and it will lead you to where you want to go. And so I think this is going to break out to the upside. Um, any, any buy in Bitcoin under $50,000 is a wonderful buy. Um, I did most of my purchases when Bitcoin was still at the $9,000 level. Um, I think my highest purchase was like 54,000. I didn't buy very much of it then, but my average price is almost exactly Michael Saylor's average price is about 20, $24,500 is right around my average buy-in cost price for Bitcoin. And I bought at a lot of different levels, and this time, you know, I got in at a higher level too, but my average, you know, buy-in price is 24500 And that's pretty cool. I still think that Bitcoin is going to go up to 60000 here, especially because um, India had planned to possibly do a blanket ban on crypto and basically shut down all the exchanges going on, so they would only be able to do peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. And the same kind of thing is happening in parts of Africa and these parts of the world, they're starting to change their minds now. If we go down here, we can check it out. India's Bitcoin exchanges breathe sigh of relief as government reconsiders crypto ban. And it is, that's just wonderful because India is one of the biggest continent uh, countries on the world and we need that population in the Bitcoin community, you know, to keep it strong and powerful. We want every country in the world on every continent to be involved in this. And so this is huge. Uh, India's Bitcoin exchange breathes sigh of relief as government reconsiders crypto ban as Indian finance minister tones down the government's previous position that fueled fears of a total crypto ban. India's crypto industry welcomes the remarks as a sign that a regulatory framework is in the making. And if you read that and you understand that, it's a really good thing because the government wants their hand in the Bitcoin money. And as long as they can do that, then they are going to be okay with it. So they're going to do a lot of different experiments. And I'll go, up, go on and read what they're going to do. So in brief, India's finance minister said the government encourages a window of experiment for crypto, which is awesome. That means they're going to experiment how to regulate it and how to make it a working asset in their, their community, in their country. And Indian crypto industry representatives told Decrypt it could mean that a total ban is off the table. Huge. 
if they ban cryptocurrency in India, one of the biggest countries in the world, that's going to affect the price of Bitcoin massively. So them deciding not to do that is big, and I'm really thankful for that. After much speculation about whether India will introduce a blanket ban on crypto, the government has finally dropped a major hint that it will not do so. The Indian crypto industry represent, representatives told Decrypt that their const, constructive engagement with the government has paid off. Nirmala Sitharaman, India's finance minister, said yesterday on India's business channel, CNBC, that the government's position on crypto will be calibrated and it wants to make sure there's a window available for all types of experiments in the crypto world. They don't know as much as they want to know about it. So people fear what they don't know. If they can go in and they can find out how they can regulate it, what needs to happen, that fear will go away. Then they don't pass the fear onto the public and you know threaten a ban because they're fearful of what it could do to their you know, community when it's a positive thing. So Bitcoin came out in 2008, uh, the end of 2008, 2009, during the recession. And there's a reason for that. Uh, you know, either people or governments started to see that the regular money wasn't working and it's already starting to collapse. So we, you can't just forever print money and expect it to... Uh, you know, keep his value. It won't. We'll lose his value. Like the euro's worth a dollar thirty-seven of our money right now, and or a dollar twenty something, and, and the the pound is worth. It's just crazy how our our dollar's losing so much value. That's why the people like Tesla are moving their U.S. dollars into Bitcoin. So I think it's really awesome. Uh, Nigeria is another one that their government is. Uh, you know, putting high pressure on um, exchanges and basically trying to ban crypto. But people just flow to the peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. So basically what you're doing is if, if you tell them you're going to ban crypto, they're going to go behind your back and do it anyway, and you're not going to get your hand in the money. And so these governments are realizing that we can't stop them from doing this because it's not our country. We can't regulate it. So if they find a way to regulate it for their country and the people for, you know, their citizens, then it will be okay. The fear goes away and they get on board and the whole world starts to adopt the idea of Bitcoin and we end up with it being mass adopted. So where you can go to the gas station and just buy gas and food or whatever you want. You can go to the grocery store and pick up your groceries and pay in Bitcoin and they will accept Bitcoin at, you know, the retailer. And I think when the, the time it will do that is when Bitcoin reaches $1 million. At $1 million price point, um, each Satoshi is worth one penny. And that would mean a hundred Satoshis would equal a dollar, just like a fiat currency. So seven zeros and a one to the 100 millionth power. So that would mean one Satoshi at a million dollar Bitcoin would be worth one penny, a hundred would be worth a dollar. I know I said that twice, but it's amazing. I can't believe that. And I think that's what Satoshi had designed Bitcoin to be worth, ultimately worth one million dollars. And that would just be the perfect price. It would turn basically Bitcoin into a fiat currency. And I think it could be heading that way. I don't know how long that will take. My near-term price prediction for Bitcoin is 60000 in the near future, the next month or so. And by the end of 2021, I believe we could go up to 112000 And I believe that because of the halvening that happens every four years. And when I got in, um, it was right around before the happening, And so I wanted to accumulate as much Bitcoin as I could. And that's the original reason that I got in because I studied it. And every time four years, uh, we have a happening. 18 months after the happening, we see a giant spike. And that's what I got into it for. We had a lot of unexpected things that happened during that time, like MicroStrategy buying in, PayPal, you know, Tesla, MasterCard, all of these places that 
are huge and they're the payment systems of our world are getting involved and the S&P 500 companies. So everything leads to a $1 million Bitcoin in the end. And I think when it reaches that price, it will become stable and no longer volatile. I think it might actually stay at $1 million forever and become, and I don't know how long that could take. That could be a 10, 20 year down the road thing but it will be mass adopted. It could be a long road to get there. We could go through a lot of bull markets, a lot of bear markets, but I think ultimately the final destination of Bitcoin is $1 million for the reasons that I told you before. So you guys, if you think that's cool, let me know your price prediction on Bitcoin and what you think it could go to. And if my price prediction makes sense to you, smash the like button, hit the subscribe and share it with like 27 of your friends. Just kidding, just share it with one, I'd be happy. And uh, guys, just take care of yourselves in this pandemic time. It's not over, so stay safe. Goodbye and good night.